Marcus Aurelius was the last of the five good emperors of ancient Rome. As emperor, he had to endure untold hardships. This includes fighting two long and brutal wars, overcoming one of the deadliest plague outbreaks which killed more than 5 million people, and dealing with an internal rebellion. Yet the accolade Marcus Aurelius is best known for is being a philosopher. The philosopher king to be exact. It has a pretty cool ring to it, doesn't it? In his book How to Think Like a Roman Emperor, Donald Robertson details this hard life of Marcus Aurelius. He helps us better understand his struggles and personal experiences. But most importantly, he teaches us how Marcus Aurelius used Stoicism to overcome his obstacles and strengthen his character. Now in this video, I share five of my favorite takeaways from this book. Each takeaway is a specific Stoic technique that Donald Robertson teaches us for overcoming emotions such as fear, anger, and pain. Now with that being said, let's get right into it. Now the first key takeaway is called the catastrophizing our fears. Now Donald Robertson tells us that the Stoics were taught to constantly ask themselves, what's the worst that can happen? This form of negative contemplation helped Marcus Aurelius envision future catastrophes with a sense of preparedness. The Stoics tell us that we are armoring our minds by facing our fears daily in small doses. We can put this advice into practice in our modern day by consciously choosing to set aside 5 minutes every day to visualize our worst fears coming true. This in turn will help us prepare ourselves for when tough times do come. So that's the first key takeaway. Now the second key takeaway is called the Stoic Reserve Clause. Now Donald Robertson tells us that the Stoic Reserve Clause is another fear-beating technique Marcus Aurelius talks about multiple times when writing to himself in his journal. The Stoic Reserve Clause can be thought of as saying fate permitting or God willing. The idea here is that when you face a dangerous situation in life, you go into it with an attitude that you will do whatever you can, and the outcome is not entirely up to you. It's called a reserve clause because our expectations are reserved for what is within our control. As the saying goes, do what you must, let happen what may. So that's the second key takeaway. Now key takeaway number three is called cognitive distancing, and this is probably my favorite takeaway from the book. Now the Stoics believe that it's not things that upset us, but our judgments about things. How we respond to our environment is what truly matters and no matter the obstacle, our perception labels the obstacle as scary and not the obstacle itself. Therefore by that logic we have the power to perceive every obstacle as an opportunity just like Marcus Aurelius did. The lesson here is that obstacles don't upset us but our perception of them do. By understanding this we can begin to decatastrophizing the situation and choose to move past whatever we fear with a sense of tranquility. So that's key takeaway number three. Now key takeaway number four is called the Stoic Sage. Now Donald Robertson here tells us that the Stoics were well known for contemplating the character of historical philosophers they admired. This contemplation would involve the Stoics asking themselves how Socrates or Zeno, who was the founder of Stoicism, would have responded when faced with obstacles. The idea here is to imagine being watched by your idols and acting as if you had to answer to them. This simple mental contemplation is a mindfulness practice that forces us to be accountable for our actions. So that's the fourth key takeaway. Now the fifth and last key takeaway is called the view from above. Now over here Donald Robertson tells us that the Stoics advise us to shift our view from a first person perspective to a broader third person perspective. Looking at life from a third person perspective helps us disconnect from our daily pains and tackle them objectively. The idea is to imagine looking at our lives from a mountaintop. By distancing ourselves from our daily worries and pain, we can reduce the effects of pain as we can see how our problems are tiny when held up against the vastness of the world and the universe. When we change the way we look at things, the things we look at change. Now on that note, that is how to think like a Roman emperor summarized. I hope you enjoyed this book summary and if you did then go ahead and click the like button and share it with your friends. And if you're interested in more book summary, philosophy or personal development content then consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you and I'll see you in the next one.